Hello, welcome to our laboratory here, where we do a lot of work on concrete. Concrete is the most used material in the world, after water. In fact, the amount of concrete we use is more than all other materials put together. And for this reason, um, it has a big impact on the environment. So intrinsically, it's actually a very low impact material. It has very low emissions of CO2 and energy, much, much lower than things like iron and steel. But because we use these enormous volumes, this means that it's uh, emitting overall somewhere around 8% of man-made CO2. Now, this is an essential material for infrastructure to house people, to build roads and bridges. So we can't do without it. We can't replace it with other materials. We have to make it better. And of course, making it better, this is a very important component of reaching the sustainable development goals. Of course, CO2 doesn't stay where it's produced. It's coming everywhere. So our glaciers are melting here in Switzerland due to CO2 produced in China and India. And if we want to have an impact, then we have to work on things that can be done in other countries as well as Switzerland. So we must think on a worldwide basis and not just uh, focus on our own little corner. What we have to understand is that we produce this material in enormous quantities. So we have to work with the most abundant materials we find on the earth. And in fact, the composition of cement we have today, which we call Portland cement, this is an inevitable consequence of the composition of the earth, of the minerals we can find, and we shouldn't think that we can have some miracle solution that will arrive from nowhere. We know the physics and chemistry of the materials we have at our disposition. What's this sample you have in here? Okay. And is he nearly finished or has he got more and more to do? No, he has more to do. Oh dear. <laughs> Okay, so what we can do, we can do a lot. And the best and most realistic thing to do is to replace part of this Portland cement we produce in this uh, very high temperature process with other materials which have somewhere, some properties. The problem is the amounts of these materials we have available is really quite small relative to the amount of cement we produce. Uh, it's only about 15% overall. So to go further, we have to find new materials we can use as well as this slag and fly ash. And the amounts of fly ash, for example, this will decrease because the first thing we have to do to reduce CO2 is to stop burning coal. So how's it going here with the concrete? We realized that we can take clays, we can calcine them, that's to say we heat them to about 800 degrees, much lower temperature than to produce Portland cement, and then when we make a combination of these calcined clays with limestone, limestone is a material with almost no CO2 emissions, then we can get very high levels of substitution, but still have the same properties we have with the reference Portland cement. This combination we have of calcined clay, limestone and cement, we call LC3. LC3 stands for limestone, calcined clay, cement. But here we can have properties which really are matching that of 100% cement with 30% less CO2 emissions. So it's very, very important to realize that this LC3, it's not just something that we do in the lab. We really have gone to full scale and uh, we're making made full scale trials in India and Cuba. We've built houses, we've taken it to factories. And what's very important, you can take it in a factory, you can give it to somebody with no supplementary training and they can use it on a one to one basis. So this really is something you can directly substitute for the materials they're using today. Uh, for example, the house we built in India, we could show that we could save about 15 tons of CO2 compared to existing materials. So we have something here, which is, uh, it works very well, has brilliant properties, it's even cheaper to produce. You can have the resources you need 
especially in the places where the demand is going up and you can produce with existing equipment. So you can ask, well, why isn't everybody doing this? Well, it's really a question of time. You know, people are focused on the day to day. First of all, we have to make sure people know about it. We have to go to their countries because people from Ethiopia, for example, are not going to come to Switzerland to hear about this. We have to go there. We have to explain. And then we have to help them to see, are the clays suitable? What is the best combination for their local materials? Questions like this. This is really what we're doing in the LC3 project, which is supported by the Swiss government through the SDC, the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. So the global impact of this technology really is cannot be underestimated. Here we have one single technology which can be implemented today, which can really save at least 1% of world CO2. And the timing is very important because, in fact, we're talking about the total amount of CO2 in the atmosphere to slow down climate change. So it's much more important to act quickly to save CO2 today than maybe have some uh, wonder solution that can only be applied in 50 years. In 50 years, we're all a lot warmer and we're already suffering.